everyone, my name is Elsa and a few days ago I posted a video about my 10 favorite books and series of all time. So uh, this video was way too long so I had to cut it in half and I forgot actually to recall something that would you know, introduce the video so here I am introducing the video. So this is part two of my 10 favorite books and series of all time. We have Keeper of the Lost Cities. So Keeper of the Lost Cities is also a middle grade. I love middle grade, I'm sorry. Uh, it's about a girl named Sophie that lives in our world and she can read minds and she just doesn't understand why she can do it because no one else in her, her family can. And one day a boy comes to her and just tells her that she's actually an elf and she comes from another part of the world. It's like in the Harry Potter books, you know, you have our world and there are parts of the world that are hidden from normal humans. Like they're, they live in our world, we just don't can't see them. And so um, we, we call those places the lost cities, hence the title. And so when she discovers that she isn't human, she just goes with the boy to her real home and she has to separate herself from her family to protect to protect her family and then we just follow her in her new life in this world so a few things about this book first thing first um you have to know that it doesn't you um i wasn't like really into it before maybe one third of the book in the first book the, the series is amazing and the first book is amazing as well but it's the it's the one I, I, I like least in the entire series and it takes a while to really start. Not because uh, it's bad, it's because just I, I think I was afraid starting it and reading the first chapters that it would be like plain and boring and just same same things you see every everywhere else. And I, I think because I was afraid of that and because I saw so much things I read elsewhere, I was like maybe, you know, mm, taking my distances with it. And so don't do that. <laughs> it's the beginning. The beginning is a bit slow because she just, she just. It starts like every other middle grade book, and then you have to go to this world and you have to learn about it. So it takes a, t a while to just really uh, connect into the story. But once you're there, you're there, <laughs> and it's amazing. I love the main character. I love the side characters as well, and they're really well depicted. And there's one character in particular that I absolutely adore. Uh, I won't tell you who it is, but he's like, it's a boy and he's amazing. So amazing. So one of my favorite book characters of all time. And so you have that. So amazing characters. You also have a great, like I said, relationships between her and her friends. And also between her and that's the main thing. No, not the main thing, but one of the things I love the most in this book. It's the relationship she has with her foster family because as she is only maybe 11 when she comes to this new world, she ha doesn't have anybody as she was forced to leave her family, her first family behind. And so she's adopted by this couple that lost their own daughter a few years back. And so the, the, the new family they, they, they construct and build together is so touching, so emotional. And you, you, you see how they both the both sides, her side and her par par foster parent side, struggle with each other, struggle with each other, and and start to love each other, and just so beautiful. So there's that. There's also a wonderful love story, like one of the best love stories I ever read. Really, amazing, so good. Like every time I read, I read a, a you know a moment when they're together and doing anything at all <laughs> they could be doing anything i would be like yeah and so every time i see them together i'm like oh. voilà. that's exactly the face i do and the sound i do <laughs> so ah, great love story so we have that we also have a great plot but i won't tell you anything about it because you know uh you don't see where it's going to go at first and i want to let you discover it by yourself so just know there's a plot it's not just her ran <laughs> randomly going around in the world no there's a there's a real thing and you you'll see about it so that's it for keeper of the lost cities and then we have wings of fire so also middle grade <laughs> wings of fire i love it so much the story takes place in a fantasy world where the dominant species is dragons 
so it's inhabited mainly by dragons and also some you know animals like sheep etc but mainly that's it and there are seven tribes of dragons and each tribe has its own appearance its own powers and its own so society and way of living and they're like completely different cultures that live in completely different part of part parts of the world and the story is about the war between them it started because the the queen of one of the tribes died and she had three daughters and one was supposed to in inherit the throne and the, the, the two of her sisters challenged her and it became a big conflict between the three of them and they dragged the other tribes into it like each tribe is behind one of the uh, one of the three sisters and because of that they are all uh, at war and they have, they've been at war i think for, for around 10 years or something like that and one of the tribe has the power to see the future and do pro and predict things do prophecies and they predicted that five dragons from five different tribes would one day come and stop the war and because uh, there was this extremist uh, rebel group that wanted to end the war, they just decided to take the matter in, in their own hands and to fulfill the prophecy themselves. And so they kidnapped uh, five baby dragons uh, from five different tribes and they raised them underground for maybe seven years. Uh, in seven years for a dragon is a long time, so I think maybe in in human <laughs> in human age it would make them maybe around 15 or something like that but the story begins with those five dragons that are maybe like like i said 15 around 15 in human age and that just haven't been in the outside in the outside world in their entire life that know nothing about it that know nothing about their own families their own culture their own tribes and just were completely raised completely blindly in this cave for all their life together and they have th those five dragons have such a strong link they are so they are so touching together the relationship is so beautiful and they have a vision they, they just you know go outside and i won't tell you what happens next but when they go outside outside you realize that they have they realize as well as you do that they have a completely different vision of the world and the tribes than the other dragons because they were raised in this particular environment and they have such a beautiful way to see the world and all of them i think this series has maybe i think the better the best world building i've ever seen like you've never seen anything like it the tribes are so complex and so different and you're just fascinated by, the, by all of their cultures and the way they interact with each other it's just fascinating you also have this strong like i said strong relationship with, be, between those five characters that is just amazing and the characters themselves or maybe be, i think they're definitely among the best characters i've ever seen in my life because they are so so complex and with such personal history and objectives and 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 wants and desires and just complex personalities and they are really flawed all of them are really flawed but so likable and relatable and you, sh you just can't help but falling in love with them so just amazing series uh, i have to say one thing about the books uh, though because uh, you might be intimidated because there are like maybe 13 books um, 13 books that came out and what you have to know is that they're they're all set in the same world but they don't they, there's like different series within the, within this world you have the five the five first books are actually about the story i just told you so that's the story of the five first books that are amazing and then the five next ones so books six to ten are a different or about a different story with different main characters it's just as great like amazing 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 series so uh, if you like love the first one you're gonna love the second set as well but it's like um, it's in the same world but a few years after the ending of the first series five book series and you just have to know that so you can you definitely should start with the with book one though so you really understand everything and because if you start with book six you will be spoiled a lot of things that happen in the first five books so you should read them in the in the order they were published but just know that you will have a real ending at the end of book five and you will have another 
ending at the end of book 10. And right now, uh, the books that are currently coming out are the, the third series. So I love them as well, and it's just not finished yet. So highly, highly recommend Wings of Fire. Then we have The Host by Stephanie Meyer. So, <laughs> Stephanie Meyer, as you well know, is the author of Twilight. So my thoughts on Twilight are I loved them when they came out. I haven't re reread them since, so I'm not sure I would love them as much now. But I really, really enjoyed them when I first read them. And I hope it wouldn't change if I read it again. And so The Host, that I think much more people should read because maybe they have prejudices against Stephanie Meyer. Whether you loved or didn't love Twilight shouldn't shouldn't be a factor because the, the book in itself, it's a standalone, is just so so great and so different. The story takes place uh, in uh, in the future, but not not a far future. But I mean in 50 years or, some, or something, and the Earth has been invaded invaded by an alien species. I can't remember the name. But they're like worms, so I'm gonna call them worms. And so they were they're worms that just implant themselves in the neck of any species and can take control of your brain. And so when they take control of humans, they actually erase the personality that was there before and just come there with their own personality because the worms have personality, they're persons. So they're not killing humans, and at the same time they are killing humans because the humans that remain on the humans that go before, they're not the same humans there. Like maybe if I was implanted a worm, it wouldn't be me anymore. So I would be dead in a sense. At the beginning of the of the book, maybe 90% of the planet has been uh, cut by the aliens. So maybe 90% of the human population is uh, implanted with worms. There's like 10% that's resistance, that live in caves or that are hiding somewhere. and you follow, and I think that's what's very interesting in this book, the alien worm that's called Wanda. So Wanda is an explorer. She lived maybe, I think, 15 lives or something on other planets in other bodies of different creatures. And so she came to this planet and was implanted in a human, a girl that was called Mel Melanie, and that was a resistant, 18 years old, around 18 years old a resistant. And what should have happened is that she should have taken control of the body and just lived her life with other worms like her and be happily ever after. Except that didn't happen because the Mel Melanie was still there. So Melanie doesn't have access to her own body. She can't really control it, but she, she is still there and she can talk you know, in her brain to Wanda that is also there. And so Wanda, for Wanda, it's just, you know, an awful experience because she's not, not alone in her own body and she doesn't feel, and she's hated by Melanie because Melanie, as you could understand, just hates aliens because they took over her planet and took over her parents and everyone she loved. And so to her, the aliens are the enemies. And the story actually uh, really begins when Melanie harasses Wanda until she, she just gave, gave up and accepted to go into a cave where other resistance are, are hiding. Among the resistance, there's Melanie's brother and Melanie's um, the, the, the man she loves. So she comes to join them and that's when the story starts, when she starts living in this cave. So a few things about this book. First, it's not an action-packed book at all. It's not about action, it's not about, you know, conflict and war and like battle between the species. It's not about that at all. What it is about, and I think it's, it's way more interesting, it's how they're gonna live together, how an alien in the body of a resistant girl that's still there is gonna live with, uh, re with humans that hate aliens because they see them as the enemy. And it's about their conflicting visions of life, of what happened, etc. Because the alien, and that's why you're, in, you're on the side of an alien, so you can't hate them, especially as you see that they are peaceful people. Like until now, when they came to invade the planet, the species they implanted themselves into didn't have as strong personalities as humans. And so they didn't feel like they were killing anybody. They were just, you know, it, it was like uh, entering the body of an animal or a plant. And so they didn't know really what they were doing when they implanted themselves in humans. And 
and as they are really peaceful people there's no more problems on earth since they, they came because there's no more wars there's no more poverty there's no more climatical problems the everything that went that was wrong with the world that was caused by humans just disappeared because uh, aliens are such good people and so you have these two sides you know the, on the one side they're just awful invaders and killers and on the other side there's like they're like really happy and nice people that just save earth from the humans and so you have those two perspectives that are in conflict in the entire book and it's really about a book about understanding each other about just have so many messages and a philosophical view i think on life and i just thought it was amazing the characters in these books are amazing really because they're really like I, I i i seem to be saying every time the same thing but it's really true and that's what i like it's complex characters with deep personality and that are flawed not perfect that have things they have to overcome etc and i and they grow so much throughout the book and it's just amazing the relationships are one of the most beautiful and touching things i've ever read in my life the, there's a lot of different relationships that are really really and developed in the books the relationship between Melanie and Wanda the relationship between Wanda and Melanie's brother the relationship between Wanda and Melanie's lover and the relationship between Wanda and Ian a boy that hates her at the beginning of the book, of the book because she is uh, an alien in Melanie's body they're like the, the four main ones but there are, there are others almost every single relationship in this book is so developed and so 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 much thought about let's let's <laughs> let's say that and yeah I really adore this book and like I said it's the standalone so you don't have to read much so do give it a shot please then we have Strange Dreamer so Strange Dreamer is a new favorite of mine and I love it so much it's a duology um and what you have to know about this book is almost nothing because i can't tell you anything about this book without spoiling it so i will tell you a quick quick uh, uh a quick summary of the plot and you won't be satisfied and i know and i'm sorry about that so the plot uh it's about a boy named laszlo he's an orphan and he was raised by monks and when he was young he was obsessed with this fantastic city that that really existed and one day he just realized that he couldn't remember the name of the city anymore when he thought about it he just thought weep like we've been crying and he just couldn't remember the real name and he, he just knew instinctively because talking with everyone else he realized that it wasn't just him like no one else remembered the, the name of the real city that something happened that made him forget the name and that he would never be able to remember it and he grew even more obsessed with the city and growing up, growing up he started working in this giant university library where when one day um, a troop of travelers came that came from this city nobody heard about for like 200 years and they were looking for people to bring back with them to solve a problem in their city and they just wouldn't say what the problem was and they were looking for very different type of people like they were looking for smiths and alchemists and builders etc and you just don't understand why they need those people with them and why they wouldn't tell them anything about what their problem is but Laszlo is like so obsessed with the city that he that he wriggles his way yeah <laughs> with the, the with the group and just comes back to the city with them and that's when the story starts and i can't tell you anything about it but trust me it's one of the it's one of the best plots i've ever read in my entire life but the problem is like the mystery so i can't just tell you what the problem is just know there's a problem and you want to see what it is and you want to see how to solve it it's just so 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 brilliant and there's like a lot of things I love about this book. So I love the writing. The writing is amazing. And um, I adored the characters. I adored like all, all, all the main characters. But the main character, Laszlo, is like my my baby. Like I, I think one of the characters I love most in the entire world. He's just a cinnamon roll. You love him so much. You can't help but falling in love with him. He's just 
so sweet and nice and not in you know a boring way etc it's just it's just so good and naive and and always dreaming but i can't i i won't be able to depict him for you in a way that you find satisfying and like enjoyable you just have to trust me on this one and read this book and just see why i love Lazo so much and you uh, you'll understand really quick why what i'm talking about but it's like one of the greatest characters i've ever encountered in any book so there's that there's also a really beautiful love story in this book and the plot like i said is absolutely amazing i just can't tell you anything about it the the powers the like there, there's really a whimsical thing going on in this book and you just can't get enough of it and the dream part you know dreams are a big thing in this book i can't tell you why but the dreams are a big thing and they are so well handled it's like you, you sit and you you you're you're always like admiring the author for thinking about doing things the way they the way that she did and every single page i was like oh, she's so smart how did she where did she got the idea to do something that brilliant and that amazing you 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 do have to be trustful in the beginning uh what i mean is uh it's a slow beginning it's not bad at all i was like really intrigued and i uh, really loved laszlo <laughs> from the start but he you the story only really begins when he reaches whip the city whip and then it it goes like from here to here and but you have to go to the city so man I, I think maybe the six six first chapters are like good but not nearly 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 as good as what comes after and finally we have Ewilan so Ewilan is a French series that is very very famous in France like so famous um, I think maybe every single book to French book to girl must have read it and loved it so so popular and i don't know why it's like not really known ab abroad and i think that's such a shame because that's my favorite series of all time and so i highly highly recommend you check it out and so for the story the story starts uh you know in our world where camille uh, her name is camille she must be i think around 14 at the beginning of the book and she, her best friend is Salim, they're like inseparable. They both have complicated lives because he lives in the slums and she uh, comes from a very rich family, but she was adopted and her parents, for a reason you don't understand, just are awful to her. And so they both rely on, a lot on each other to, you know, go through life. And one day they're like attacked by monsters that come from who knows where. And she discovers she can travel to an other world. And so they travel there to escape the monsters and then they're stuck there. So they're stuck in this other world they know nothing about. And then they are found by this knight that just brings them to the capital. And throughout the journey, they understand that she was actually born in this world and that her parents to protect her um, just travel to earth to leave her so she could be adopted and now they, they realize why because she has one of the most in, impossible impossibly <laughs> strong powers in this world everyone can access what's called the imagination so it's like uh, a, a dimension in your mind if you reach a certain level you can create everything you think of let's say i imagine a wall it will appear in the reality and so uh, everyone should be able to access imagination but the powers is more or less strong uh, depending on the person and so you like everyone can create a small flame but not everyone can create a wall and not everyone can create you know a giant storm storm or like um, a castle or something you know really big and difficult things or it's in a eternal eternal thing you know things that last forever i don't know if it was clear uh those type of things you have to be really really strong and kami is one as one of the strongest powers that were ever seen and she's particularly needed because the people in this world are at war with another species called the slitch they are like mm, men, uh, uh, a cross between dragons and mantis and so those uh and they're and they're, they're they're thinking they're like really smart 
and they are trying to overcome you know to, to invade their world and they are resisting for now but they won't resist much longer because all of them best magicians let's call them that uh, were petrified by Titch and they were hidden somewhere and just no one can get to them or uh, unpetrify them because they don't have uh, strong enough power and she's the only one <laughs> that can actually do it and so she goes on a journey with Salim, her best friend, and a lot of different characters. I think there may be 12, there may be 12 in the group, and you just follow her on the journey. And it might not seem like much, I don't know how this came across, but it's like amazing. Why? The characters are so well depicted, you just love them. Camille is, is just a great complicated character. Salim are oh, just Salim, you are oh, his. Oh, great just just great and every single character in this story is like really complex and developed and grows throughout the book their relationships as well although they are really they, there's like they're like 12 <laughs> there's like 12 of them all the really all the relationships are really developed and were the author really worked on every single one of them and there are several love stories so and they're all great maybe not not my favorite ones of all time although one or two might be but they're really really beautiful love stories the plot is incredible you just the, the things they have to overcome the battles the fights everything is just top notch great incredible the magic the the magic system is one of the best i ever read you know like the imagination i i just explained it so badly to you <laughs> because it's in english i don't have the words for it and you know i haven't read the series in a few years so i don't remember exactly the specifics i know how it works but i wouldn't be able to explain it really way really well to you so trust me the magic system is just absolutely incredible and you will like it so much the world building is amazing as well and i think that the atmosphere i know really everything about this book is amazing and i th i just think it's a shame because in france i wouldn't even have to convince you of that because everyone knows it everyone who reads books and reads reads uh, middle grades and young, young adults books or fantasy has heard of this series and love loves this series and i just can't tell you too much without spoiling you but trust me it's incredible and there's a reason it's so popular in france and i wish i wish everyone abroad would love it as well so that's it for my top 10 favorite uh, top 10 favorite books of all time so i hope you enjoyed this video if you've read any of the series i mentioned please comment on it i'm really interested especially for uh, the series that are less known like Delta Quest and Ewilan like have you ever heard of them or am I just the only one uh, I would be really interested in that and everything you would have to say so just don't forget to subscribe and like if, to li if you like this video and see you around